today we're revisiting the Lux Zeppelin project. The Lux Zeppelin project is a deep underground research facility in the Black Hills of South Dakota that for some reason uses names that are used by Nazis. You know, Zeppelin. So anyway, so a lot of what I've been doing is research into the nuclear technology, the deep underground uh, research facilities, and, and what the alternate possibilities are. And right now, the Lux Zeppelin project is bigger than CERN. So what we're doing here is we're looking for connections to Fermilab, and to things that popped up in the God Pattern videos which are now private. So I'm hoping some of you see them and you remember them because you're going to be the ones who leave comments talking about the connections. That's your job in the God Pattern series. Is anyone who saw the God Pattern videos where I showed you the numbers and then I made them private, now you get to observe the connections and choose to comment or not. So the first thing we're going to look for is we're going to look for Fermilab. Okay, and we want we want to find Fermilab in in this thing. So we see that the conceptual design report for the Lux Zeppelin project is from Fermilab. Fermilab again. Fermilab again. And Fermilab again. And so this section 11.3 of the Lux Zeppelin. Uh, report says the key element for the LZ data processing is the analysis framework which will contain some standard processing modules and will allow users to put together modular code for data analysis to automatically take care of the basic data handling IO event run selection etc a dedicated task force was created at the end of July 2014 to evaluate various options for Lux Zeppelin in terms of existing frameworks, two root-based frameworks were considered. Gaudi, developed at CERN and used by Atlas, LHCB, Minor VA, uh, Dea Bay, etc. And Art, developed at Fermilab and used by Microboo and E, Nova, LBNE, Darkside 50, etc. Those are some of the other collider sites around the world, by the way. In parallel, the possibility of evolving the framework developed for Lux, which is based on Python scripts and a MySQL database and supports modules written in Python, C++, Root, or MATLAB, was also evaluated. For completeness, developing a new framework from scratch was also considered as another alternative. However, given the amount of effort this would have required of the order of the least several FTE years, based on estimates from other experiments such as CMS, Double Choose, Mini Boon, NE, T2K, etc., this option was dismissed. Input from the entire collaboration regarding the desired features of the LZ framework was collected and organized by the task force. And the three candidate frameworks were evaluated and ranked against this list. In addition, presentations and live demos for each of the three contenders were given during the regular task force meetings, while core frameworks were also installed on different test platforms to evaluate the respective installation process. So it looks like they're going to be going with the Gaudi framework, which is important. So anyway, so uh, what we're dealing with is Fermilab's programming languages like MATLAB, and you'll see that in my God pattern research, the MATLAB programming language showed up with some hardware devices uh, that do input-output terminals from National Instruments. So. Uh, you know, that's the, there, there's a whole spec. I mean, this thing is friggin' huge. You know, I mean, simulations, I mean, AI, I mean, it's, it's got everything. Anyway, so, but Enrico Fermi, who started Fermi Labs, is the person who uh, is credited with creating the world's first nuclear reactor, the Chicago Pile 1. 
He has been called the architect of the nuclear age and the architect of the atomic bomb. He was one of the very few physicists in history to excel both theoretically and experimentally. Fermi held several patents related to the use of nuclear power and was awarded the 1938 Nobel Prize in Physics for his work on induced radioactivity by neutron bombardment and the discovery of transuranic elements. Let me, let me repeat that. He was awarded the 1938 Nobel Prize in Physics for his work on induced radioactivity by neutron bombardment and the discovery of transuranic elements. That's going to come later. Uh, he made significant contributions to the development of quantum theory, nuclear and particle physics, and statistical mechanics. Quantum computing, nuclear and particle physics, and machine learning. So Fermi Labs has their own nuclear power plant in Chicago. This is it, the one that generates their neutrinos. But the one thing we want to look at is a element 93, which is the transuranic element, the first one. You, you know, the thing that Enrico Fermi received the Nobel Prize in physics for. Transuranic elements. Transuranic element. So my theory is that after World War II, with the newfound nuclear age upon us, uh, Enrico Fermi, Enrique Fermi built a nuclear power plant and started making element 93 for this stuff anti-gravity aircraft and free energy so the reason is we're gonna look at the Diaglock uh, the Diaglock was uh, a top secret Nazi scientific technological device secret weapon uh, described in 2000. It was later popularized by military journalist and author Nick Cook as well as by writers such as Joseph P. Farrell and others who associated with Nazi occultism and anti-gravity or free energy research. Nazi occultism, anti-gravity, and free energy from transuranic elements that were uh, awarded a, a Nobel Prize in physics to Enrico Fermi. Enrique Fermi, or Enrico Fermi. So now the operations that brought that to life were things like Operation Paperclip, which brought all the German scientists to the United States because we, we needed nuclear scientists. And that was also done through Operation Epsilon, which Operation Epsilon was codename of a program in which Allied forces near the end of World War II detained 10 German scientists who were thought to have worked on Nazi Germany's nuclear program. Additional operations were Operation Big was an operation of the al sos mission, the Allied seizure of facilities, material, and personnel related to the German nuclear weapon project during World War II. And the other one, I think I already looked at that one, didn't I? No. And the last one, the ALSOS mission, was an organized effort by a team of United States military, scientific, and intelligence personnel to discover enemy scientific developments were during World War II. Its chief focus was on the German nuclear energy project, but it also investigated both chemical and biological weapons and the means to deliver them. So, we're at the point now where, uh, you know, we're seeing our, our ex-president, George Bush, talk about Nazis. We're having problems with Hillary Clinton selling uranium to unknown people for experiments. We have nuclear programs that go back to the 1940s to test Nazi UFOs. And it all links to a Lux Zeppelin project that is being developed by Fermi Labs, which it was started by Enrico, Enrico Fermi, who 
received a Nobel Prize in Physics for his work on induced radioactivity by neutron bombardment and the discovery of transuranic elements. So what this means for us regular people is we have a breakaway society that's literally developing flying saucers. Like for real. I mean, you noticed I didn't go into any creepy conspiracy theory websites. Like I went to like Fermi Labs. I went to an actual project that, you know, if you go to the last page of this project, it tells you that it was funded by the United States government. Right. So this isn't like some document some weird dude on the Internet wrote. This is like a, a for real United States Department of Energy approved project document that talks about things like xenon detector systems that was developed by people that make nuclear power plants that were started by that guy that made that stuff that was originally thought of by Nazis to make this stuff like anti-gravity and free energy with that stuff so all these dudes could keep being douchebags get it? pretty easy when you put it together right and the only reason it makes any sense is because these dummies they can't not put zeppelin somewhere they have to always put their zeppelins everywhere it's always about your zeppelins isn't it you freaking nazis <laughs>